Hello, Mary Meat. So, I want to review a book. And the book I want to review is this one. Icelandic Magic by Christopher Allen Smith. And this book is so good. Here's the thing. Very often when you are getting a book on magic from a specific culture, that be Norse or Egyptian or Hoodoo or any type of the of culture based magic very often it's very hard to find out if what you are looking at is authentic or not because there's so much misinformation around there because generally speaking what happens is person a uh, writes something that generally speaking are oh, just bullshit but it's how they think it is and then they publish that in a book, and person B reads that book, and bases their practice on that, and then they publish it as bullshit, and basically, and then misinformation spreads. And the only real uh, way to um, sort that out is either to be very proficient within the systems that we are talking about themselves, or to go to as uh, archaeological publications and see if anything is actually right. Now, what this book does right is that it has extensive, as an, an extensive bibliography of what it's at stake in. Uh, this guy has been working at the Icelandic uh, uh, Witchcraft Museum, and he has taken this information. This information straight from six of the um, uh, Skaldabokur, uh, the Icelandic remorse, which I think there's at least, was this it, 21 of them? It was 20-something grimoires that has been found. And he pr basically presents the several uh, spells from these various grimoires and then analyze them. That's basically what this is. It's There are one chapter that has some practical magic in it that basically presents this is how you can do what you can do if you want to practice this system. But that's it. Uh, it's basically not a book uh, intended to teach you practical magic, but rather it is a book that uh, will teach you about Icelandic magic and the history of it. It's basically um, magic as practiced in the early modern period in Iceland. Now, what's really interesting here is that, for example, it analyzes what, uh, what sort of magic was practiced, uh, what, um, for what reasons. Because one very interesting thing when it comes to folk magic is that you see a lot of what people were interested in, what was the concerns people had, because those are the things that they generally magic for. Now, is uh, Icelandic magic of this type, are generally speaking, most of the time they will be using staves. Uh, staves are ritual symbols, and often they were just cut into wood or drawn on parchment, and that was all. They were used basically as the whole thing. Sometimes you also had verses that were read over it. So here are some examples of staves. Like I said, this is authentic because you see pictures of pages directly from uh, those grimoires, uh, and like I said, extensive sources, and the author also reads Icelandic. So this, if you want some authentic Icelandic magic, you can find it here. So let's go through some chapters as we usually do when you re when we review books. I can't talk today. Oh, and uh, just here's the author. And the book is very well written. Um, sometimes, uh, and he warns actually in the book, this is going to be a very dry, very scholarly book, and it is. Except he doesn't really write that dryly. It's very comfortable to read this. So yeah, we have about the author. We have acknowledgments. We have an introduction. Uh, and we have note on 
uh, orography and pronunciation for Icelandic because sometimes the spells are presented in their original Icelandic and English translation. In your chapter 1, Icelandic Magic in Context, this basically tells about the uh, how uh, what Iceland was like in the early modern period. Uh, it talks a bit about um, the witch hunts in uh, Iceland, which was a bit different from uh, other areas at the time because it was almost all men that was accused. And we can see from the grimoires as well that most of them are intended. You can see that the owner was a man. So nobody really knows if this means that it was only men that practiced magic or almost only men in the early uh, uh, modern period in Iceland or if women perhaps did it differently or basically that women were just ignored in it. We, we don't know. Uh, then we have the Books of Magic, which goes to about the grimoires and the history of them, where they were found and similarities and which grimoires that he will be using for this. And we have uh, a chapter 3, which is Purposes and Preoccupations, which basically discusses what the purposes for magic generally were in Iceland and in the period um, and what the difficulties and struggles for the people living in this period generally was. Yes, adjust the camera a little bit. There we go. In chapter 4, the main techniques of Icelandic magic, which goes to basically how did I do it. It discusses the staves and what tools and such were used. Well, actually the tools is one chapter down. But basically the techniques, and we have the tools of Icelandic magic, just goes through all the various tools that are generally mentioned within these six grimoires. Uh, then we have uh, chapter 6, which is uh, you have time and space, which uh, discusses some philosophy of it. Then we have chapter 7, uh, which discusses uh, its link to runes and the persistence of hidden beliefs. Generally speaking, ties this Icelandic system in with other Norse systems because it is based, it is a Norse based system. You have Vikings in Iceland, it's not just the Norway people. Uh, and basically, Iceland was generally settled with settlers from Norway within the Viking era. So it's definitely inspired from there. Though, um, for the most part, we haven't found these staves in use, generally speaking, outside of Iceland. So it's a, it's a very unique system, which makes it very interesting. Then we have um, some prominent themes and their applications, uh, which again goes into what magic was practiced for and, and what you can see again and again in these spots. Then you have about complexity, which basically discusses that for the most part, these spells were extremely simple. It compares them to um, the early Renaissance uh, alchemists and ritual magic, which was practiced in England and Italy and basically all over Europe at this same period of time, because we're talking about the 14, 15, 16, 1700s. I think most of these books here are from the 1700s, uh, basically the early modern period. And basically how simple this system is. So there are some that have several operations, basically each day for three days go and carve this rune into this, not rune, this stave into such and such thing at such and such point. But generally speaking, the instructions are very, very simple. It's far easier to follow these instructions than it is to uh, change the battery in your remote. It's basically to take this symbol, carve it into that, say this. Though there are some that are more complicated, you, you have that. And it's. And then you have some. Um, and then you have um, chapter 11, which basically discusses who practices it. It, has a, it discusses this with the prevalence of men within magic. Uh, and uh, basically why somebody would practice magic. Then you have the work cited, which is a pretty long list here. They have suggestions for further reading and an index. And the index is really, really, really good. So it's easy to find what you are looking for. So yeah, uh, if you're interested in 
as Icelandic history or basically Norse history in general. This is a good book. If you're interested in folk magic, it's a good book. And if you're interested in so basically magic in general, this is an awesome book describing a very unique system that you don't see anywhere else. So yeah, um, it is very interesting. It goes into detail with, with how did old Norse belief then fit within the growing Christianity and all of these uh, concepts putting this system of magic within the context of its time. I really, really enjoyed reading it. It got me super interested in Icelandic magic, so I'm definitely going to have to pick up some of the books on the suggested reading list. Uh, and the staves are so beautiful. I um, I just want to start using this system. And it is generally easy to use, easy to understand folk magic system. So yeah, uh, for authentic Norse magic, this is a great book. And that is my review of Icelandic magic. Aims, tools and techniques of the Icelandic sorcerers by Christopher Allen Smith. And it's published by Avalonia. There's that mark. So yeah, I hope you have enjoyed this review. Have a great day and blessed be.